good evening. Um, good to see you or uh, just to read your name. <laughs> and um, okay, I hope everybody had a good week. Tonight I will be speaking just briefly a little bit about you probably you probably imagine loving kindness and then I will uh, we will go into meditation as usual and tonight is just a short uh, sutta from the numerical discourses of the Buddha that I wanted to share and um, in fact it's three very short sutta but they're very similar you'll see and um, it may be I thought I would explain a little more um, just how the the beginning stages of what the Buddha called meditation how it happens and uh, especially uh, with the loving kindness and so I'll speak a little bit more about how to enter uh, the, f the first level of meditation, the first jhana with loving kindness and how that works. And uh, here's the, this, this sutta doesn't really have a name, but uh, I call it the finger snap sutta. <laughs> and the, the Buddha goes like this, monks, if for just the time of a finger snap, a monk pursues a mind of loving-kindness. He is called a monk who is not devoid of jhana, meditation, who acts upon the teacher's teaching, who responds to his advice, and who does not eat the country's alms food in vain. How much more so for those who cultivate it? And then he repeats the same thing in a diff with only uh, one word different. <laughs> he says, monks, if for just the time of a finger snap, a monk would develop a mind of loving kindness. He is called a monk who is not devoid of jhana, who acts upon the teacher's teaching, who responds to his advice who does not eat the country's food in vain, alms food in vain, how much more so than from one who cultivates it. And then the last one is monks, if for just the time of a finger snap, a monk attends to a mind of loving kindness, or with a mind of loving kindness, he is called a monk who is not devoid of jhana, who acts upon the teacher's teaching, who responds to his advice, and who does not eat the country's alms food in vain, how much more so than of one who would cultivate it. And these, these little short suttas are very, uh, quite wonderful because they, they go really to the heart and they, they make a lot of things very clear and one of them in particular that I uh, want to underline is that there are many different ways that loving kindness or meditation is being taught and in some, in some, uh, in some uh, teachings uh, this thing we call jhana, which is basically meditation. Jhana is from the root D. It's like to see. To D is like to illuminate. It's uh, it comes back uh, twice uh, in the Gayatri mantra uh, that is recited by Hindu priests in the morning by the by the Ganges river um, when the sun is rising. So D is uh, to see, is like this, this wisdom also of being able to witness things and to illuminate. 
And this word uh, dhyana is basically to practice this, to practice this clarity, this vision. And sometimes it has been interpreted as uh, very uh, f forced uh, kind of uh, profound awareness where the mind is very focused for a very long time and some some ways of teachings have been uh, teaching that jhana is very hard to access and very hard to get to and I I felt like addressing this uh, tonight just quickly and with this sutta in particular because uh, jhana is not hard to access and in fact it's quite easy and this wonderful little sutta here is our proof that in fact whenever we bring up the feeling of loving kindness there cannot be the buddha said there cannot be any hatred there's either the loving kindness or there is aversion but there cannot be both at the same time and so when we place this wonderful feeling inside our heart inside our chest then then there is the feeling of love there is no feeling of dislike there is no feeling of enmity because that's the opposite of the feeling of loving kindness when these states arise we know we've left the loving kindness that's how we know we've left it and that's what we call a hindrance a distraction and also there is no desires outwards because it's just this wonderful feeling uh, that is taking up uh, our attention and developing our mindfulness love comes with mindfulness caring comes with mindfulness it's a state that is imbued with attention imbued with presence and that's how we cultivate mindfulness is by these wholesome states that the Buddha said kusala dhamma and I wanted to clarify just a little the beginnings of the meditation where the Buddha said to when we enter the first level of meditation what, what is the first level of meditation well he says Vivichewa kammehi, vivichewa akusalehi dammehi. And this means disengaging. Viveka is uh, like we saw, dis disengaging, detaching, letting go from outward desires, kammehi, and letting go, disengaging, detaching from unwholesome states dislikings, opinions, uh, judgments, critical thoughts, <laughs> uh, doubt, restlessness, and uh, as we do so, these, these are also called the hindrances, and as we let go of these, then there is space in the mind for more attention, and there is space for more loving-kindness to be established and the loving-kindness is like um, a buoy also it kind of brings us out of the these unwholesome states because sometimes that's the problem about these unwholesome states is that they're not very mindful they're kind of uh, very uh, impulsive or reactive or we in fact lose mindfulness and then we slip into these states and sometimes it's not easy to discern whether we were really mindful or not and the loving kindness is just 
cleaning the slate. <laughs> and we can be sure that when the feeling is there, there is presence, there is mindfulness, and there is caring attention. And then, the Buddha says, Savita kang savicharang. And that means accompanied with thinking and um, reflection or imagining. So at this point, there is still, there is still bringing up a souvenir of holding a puppy. <laughs> that is still possible at that point. There is the imaging that is still active because it's a, a, a coarser aspect of the mind, but when we use it skillfully, we can use it to uplift the mind and use it to bring up the loving kindness or the um, sentences or phrases that can help us like, oh, may I be happy? May all my family and relatives be happy. And may all living beings throughout the universe be happy in all directions. And these, sometimes just saying these, verbalizing these words once in a while can help us come back and bring, bring back the loving kindness. And these, these are still present. This, in the first level, the first level of meditation. And this is a gradual process. And as we see the distractions, when they arise, when the mind starts wandering, the monkey starts jumping from one branch to another. And then we notice that. And then we notice the, the tension inside the head or perhaps it's even coarser, perhaps it's anywhere in your body, shoulders or chest, abdomen. Sometimes people feel it in all kinds of places. And we realize that these distractions always bring tension. And to feel that and to know that and to let it go and relax. And then we Practicing like this, it doesn't happen instantly, but it's a gradual process and you have to have faith. You have to persist. You have to continue. Continue letting go. Continue relaxing that tension. And then the crazy monkey mind will kind of settle down. It'll, it'll get, <laughs> it'll um, see what it's actually doing for, for, maybe the first time but for now and how it's behaving and get a look in the mirror and as we as we do this then there is uh, glimpses where the mind will become very bright or for a, a little bit longer it was maybe two three seconds before before the mind started jumping again and doing all these crazy things but then after 10 seconds now oh it's lasting a little bit longer and 15 seconds and then it's like a, a break in the clouds it's like this cloud of hindrances of distractions constantly going on but as we continue relaxing the tension that comes from the distractions and bring up the loving kindness again, which is what the Buddha called right effort, wise practice. And from, from there, con continually doing this, these, this, these states of the first level of meditation arise slowly slowly and the hindrances are left behind we start to disengage from them that's what it means viveka and we still have this 
active faculty in the mind of thinking and we direct it to the wholesome now it's loving thought or loving imagination because this feeds the loving kindness now and that's great it's still it's still very normal in the first in the first level of meditation and this is not something that happens over a year practice it it can happen very soon very fast and these factors they just get stronger the more we practice and they just take more time if we don't practice but they're not nobody has to meditate 10 hours a day for two years to get to that point it's very accessible and then as we do this then there is every time we detach every time we disengage from the tension there is relief and joy that arises from that relief at the beginning it's hard to see because the mind is tight there's a lot of tension there's a lot of restlessness and we don't get that spoonful of honey every time <laughs> we don't get the, the strong joy every time because there's relief and then the mind goes again <laughs> there's relief and then the mind goes again but the more we do it the more we get to taste the honey of meditation and the honey is called piti sukha is um, in the first level the first strata of meditation is uh, viveka jang piti sukkang which means the blissful happiness or the joyful happiness born of mental detachment disengaging and these factors arise as we practice and they get stronger and they get more established and we get to experience that joy for longer periods of time and for example on retreat we really that is one of the benefits of uh, longer retreats is that we get to really experience this and really taste the honey and so going from here I invite you to take a comfortable position and you can close your eyes and just smile take a deep breath and viveka let everything go disengage relax viveka everything that happened to you today viveka everything in the past that might be taking your mind the space of your mind right now maybe you're planning for some future trip or travel or work viveka all of it let it go and smile
just relax and smile Allow your mind to be free. If there's any thoughts right now, just let them go. If they stick, doesn't matter. Don't take it too seriously. Just laugh at your wild monkey mind when we laugh at ourselves when we laugh at our crazy mind <coughs> we change our perspective we change our state of mind directly instead of taking it seriously and causing unwholesome states like impatience to arise we just take all of its power away and we laugh and like this we become more present more aware It's only the mind. Let it do its thing. Buddha said it's like hauling a fish out of the water and landing it on dry land. It flops all over the place for quite a while. And then it kind of realizes it's pointless. And it calms down. Now this is just an example. The fish goes back into the water. <laughs> is there any part of your body that is tensed? In your neck? What about your jaw, your temples? Your shoulders? Release, relax any tension that's in your body. understand the tension in your body is the tension in your mind there is no separation and the Buddha very often taught to be aware of our own body and to start with the body because we can feel the body very easily it is very present we can feel the tension in the body his instructions were pasam bayang kaya sankaram tranquilize the body tension and he said you
you will then know the whole body. Sabbakayang Pajanati. Because when the blocks, when the tension, when the hardness dissolves in the body, it dissolves in the mind as well. And what that does is that it liberates more space, more awareness. And tension is subtle. It builds up during the day. We often don't even realize it. That's the problem. And notice how good it feels to just relax and enjoy the relief of viveka, of letting go. And smile. A lot of people think that the Buddha did not teach to smile, but he did. There's one little tiny sneaky sutta where he says, because if you feel like smiling because of the Dhamma, because of the bliss of the Dhamma, you can smile. Even just right now, you might be experiencing a little bit of the piti sukhan, the blissful happiness of letting go. The Buddha's instruction, instructions were very clear. He said, fill, drench, soak, pervade, permeate your whole body with this joy, this blissful happiness born of letting go.
And if you are wondering, that means enjoy. Enjoy this moment, this relief, this letting go. And feel it in your whole body. And from now, whenever you feel ready, bring up the feeling of love, of goodwill, of tenderness and care inside your heart, inside your chest. It's this bright, perhaps tingling feeling, perhaps warm feeling in the center of your chest that radiates down to the tip of your fingers, to the tip of your head, to the tip of your toes. The feeling of love is a naturally radiant feeling. And so allow it to radiate through your whole body. Like I've mentioned earlier, you can think about a person or a small animal that you like that helps you bring this feeling of love and compassion. Perhaps for you words are better. Perhaps for you Wishing happiness for your own self first works better. Perhaps it's for one of your relative. Perhaps it's for someone you know, someone you truly respect someone you easily feel that feeling for.
without falling into sticky physical attraction things but people you like for their virtues their qualities their goodness perhaps for you the feeling is easier to come up when you say sentence like may you be happy may you have everything that you need to be happy and at peace or perhaps may all living beings be happy perhaps for you it's a teacher perhaps for you it's a friend perhaps it's a child skillfully directing our thoughts and attention to things, objects or people that bring this feeling. Or perhaps for you, the thinking and reflection is too much. The mind wants more peace. And the feeling of loving kindness is already stabilized and there. And it doesn't need to be encouraged by any pushing or thinking of the mind. And that is even better. We can simply rest on the feeling of love inside your body. these objects, these recollections they are tools to nudge our mind in the right way when the feeling of loving kindness becomes established and present 
we don't need the tools anymore. We can just let them go, leave, leave them behind. And go a little deeper in the meditation. And it's possible that you experience strong joy at times. And that is perfectly normal. And that is good. It is a good sign. The Buddha says it is go going to happen. And in fact, it is part of the meditation. It is that piti sukang, that blissful, joyful happiness. Arising more and more, and becoming stronger. Because now it has the space to do so. the mind will become distracted that's okay it's normal the mind has been conditioned in that way to run after things all the time and we are now breaking that habit we're letting go viveka see what happens gardening a new mind
these distractions are like weeds in our garden. They're taking up all the space and choking the plants that bear fruit that actually support us and support the people around us. And now we're just weeding the mind. Seeing, noticing when the mind wanders. Noticing the tension that comes with it. Slight tension. It's subtle. But we notice it. And then we let go of that tension. We understand that tension. We don't really want tension. Dukkha, it's not pleasant. We let go of it. We relax. And then sukha, happiness, arises. as we come back with a smile to the loving-kindness. And if you feel, feel like you have your fill for your own self, and you feel the feeling of loving kindness very well in your whole body, and that is a mindfulness that is more established. Now it is time to practice your generosity and allow it to flow, to beam outwards in all directions, all directions at the same time, in the front, in the back, to the left, to the right, above and below, all directions, just like the sun. wish to all living beings in all directions happiness and give them your love your unconditional love No need to force it too much. Relax. This happens almost on its own. Just know it is shining. touching all of space and all of the universe. And smile.
and like this the mind is fully open fully radiant with no hindrances unobstructed the Buddha called this the liberation of the mind of the heart through boundless love And what we do now is called bhavana, mental development, kusala dhamma bhavana, wholesome mental development. And it is not just meditation, it is a way of life. And slowly, day by day, we learn to become more established in this awareness of boundless love. And we bring it into our daily life. And it is easy to incorporate you only need a little bit of will And I invite you to carry this wonderful feeling, extremely wholesome feeling, and take it even further and practice your generosity into your daily life and share this feeling with 
the people around you. Listen to them when they talk. Help somebody that's fallen down to get back on their feet. Someone that's trying to reach over something that's too far. Just help them. Of course you can give to charities and help financially so many wonderful opportunities in fact hard times are wonderful opportunities to practice generosity good actions helping others But there's so many things also that we can do that do not involve money. Simply help as much as you can. And notice the difference it makes in your life. and share this beautiful feeling. Sabe sata sabe bana sabe buta sabe pugala Sabe ata bhava pariyapanna Sabe itiyo sabe purisa Sabe ariya sabe anariya and where I want to have your page on to and he gone to suki at an angry on to do come a chant to get a lot of somebody to my we got chant to come a saka the man who dama patty patty a budang puja me Dhamma nu dhamma pati pati ya dhamma puja mi Dhamma nu dhamma pati pati ya sangha puja mi Hadai maya jati jara bhyadi maranangha parimuchi sami Idam me punyang asawa kayang waham hotu Idam me punyang nibana sa pachayo hotu Mama punya bagang sabasa tanang bajimi te sabe me samang punya bagang labantu sadu 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 May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be May the grieving should all grief and may all beings find relief May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's teaching. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.